Well, welcome back to Maples Pavilion, the place to be in prime time on a Friday night. Our first round action continues. Stanford and Norfolk State, champions of the MEAC against the Pac-12 and the 15 versus two. And welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship. It is presented by Capital One. And what a fantastic first game that we have already witnessed earlier tonight. Audie Crooks led the second largest comeback in NCAA tournament history with a 40 piece. The freshman getting it done in Iowa State. The seventh seed over Maryland. The 10th seed awaits the winner of this game right now between Stanford, the two, Norfolk State, the MEAC champions, the 15th seed. Well, so glad you could join us. Lights are out again. Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott. And we expect more fireworks tonight. We've got Norfolk State, MEAC champions. They've won 15 games in a row. We've got Stanford, who has one of the best players on the planet in Cameron Brink. Yeah, this Norfolk State team is hyped to be here. They've been here now two times in a row. So it's a team that's going to be ready to come in here and fire it up. But you are facing the best shot blocker in the country in Cameron Brink. So they are going to have to hit some outside shots. Yeah, three and a half shot blocks per game. That leads America as we take a look at our most reliable player, brought to you by Xfinity. And it is Cam Brink. She is back, and she's probably the number two pick in the WNBA draft this summer. And has just gotten so much better with a year of work. She's got range now. She can extend her shot outside, but it's her help side, defense, it's her energy, it's her passion, it's her fire. That's what makes the difference for this Stanford Cardinal team. Take a look at our Capital One starting lineups. Diamond Johnson, the transfer from NC State, averages over 20 points per game. Kiara Wheeler was the MEAC Player of the Year. The Spartans can score, and for Stanford, it's not only Cam Brink, it's Kiki Iriafin, who also averages a double-double at 19 and 11 per game. And they've got a lot of veteran leadership in the backcourt as well that has been a difference maker for head coach Tara Vanderveer, Cam Brink, Iriafin, and the Stanford team. They are better connected, and they feel like they're in a much better spot to advance here out of Maples as compared to what happened a year ago against Ole Miss. And one of the all-time great coaches in any sport at any level, Tara Vanderveer, leads her team in search of another national championship run. As we are set and ready to go. And Cambrink taps it back to Tawana Lapolo, and we are underway at Maples. Stanford in the white unis, Norfolk State playing the matchup zone in the green and gold. Open look out of the corner, and that's a three, and Mosgana connects right away. With Stanford, you have an incredible passing team who is so disciplined, they're going to find you know, the best shot. And you'd expect him to go inside early on to bring, but instead they go outside. Mosgana. There's Naya Fields with a path and the bounce pass off of Wheeler. Against the taller Brink, the pump fake up and under, no, and Brink clears. And that's the problem facing Cam Brink with all that size and athleticism. Stolen away by Norfolk State. On the run is Williams, in and out. Now those kind of plays, you know, they got to take advantage of those. So this is a, a team that is going to play with this type of energy as long as they have it. And as Cam Brink goes up, she gets met at the rim. Met at the rack and Brink. Give it back to Norfolk State. As Bosgana picks up the foul, that's her first. Larry Vickers, eighth full season as the head coach at Norfolk State. And two straight MEAC Coach of the Year awards claimed by the former Spartan basketball player. We talked to him yesterday, always entertaining to catch up with Coach Vickers. He said, I've got an emotional team this year. When they get emotional, I sit down to try to balance it out. <laughs> So you know when coach is sitting down, it's getting tight out there. But what I love, too, about Larry Vickers and his story is he spent eight seasons on the men's staff, coaching on the men's side as an assistant, and then got some signs of life to see what it was like over on the women's side. And he told us, you know what? I'm never going back. Never going back. Never. Shot clock at 10. Another touch for Cam Brink and an easy layup. When you can get that type of spacing and you got big guards, who was going to at 6-2. We saw that high-low action work really well for Iowa State. It's going to be the same for Stanford. Cameron Brink, first-team AP All-American. Pac-12 Player of the Year, Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. She does it all, literally. There's Mimi Wheeler inside Norfolk State on the board. Great job by Wheeler so far. Good defensive play. She was able to block a shot. 
for Cameron Brick. And with that score, did you see the way she sprinted back down? Made sure she was able to get in front of Kiki Iriaf and prevent that entry pass. Tara Vandeveer winning as coach in the history of college basketball. 15 Final Fours, three national championships. Most recent one coming in 2021. We talked to her yesterday, always delightful, always engaging, and always adapting. Inside, the bucket's good for Iriafen. And Iriafen is probably the best player in the country you have not heard enough of. Kiki Iriafen, just her outstanding, just her, her uh, improvement, I should say, over last year to this year. 11 points, seven rebounds more. She's getting it done. Getting her name known, too, to those WNBA scouts. Pass fake and a traveling violation from Wheeler. Gives it back to the Cardinal. Lead already at five for number two seed Stanford. Cardinal lost to USC in the Pac-12 championship game. Beat Cal and Oregon State on their run to the finals. Last year, of course, of the Pac-12. That's an ongoing story as Stanford begins its transition into the ACC later this summer. You know, much different look for the ACC, you know, as you factor in travel to that. I mean, the Big Ten has seen some of that, so now the Pac-12 will also, you know, with the decisions they're making, the teams leaving there. It's, that is a lot for student athletes to deal with. Bria Clark picks up her first, and a first team foul called against Norfolk State. Told you the Spartans have won 15 in a row. Back-to-back MEAC championships. Larry Vickers perhaps gave us the line of the weekend. He said, when Diamond Johnson transferred to us, that news was on the ticker on ESPN <laughs> all day long. And they took a lot of pride in that and getting her kind of back closer to home. Cam Brink on the offensive glass. Too strong that time. Norfolk State controls, and that's Fields. Yeah, the biggest get for this Hornets team was getting Diamond Johnson. And Fletcher's just showing her strength early on, or Wheeler, I should say, excuse me. But Johnson, yeah, 5'5", five, five. You know, she's got the strength, the, the quickness, maybe not the height, but she can ball. Brink off the back iron, here he off in the rebound, and she was fouled. Well, Diamond Johnson, the MEAC Newcomer of the Year. We mentioned her start of her career at NC State. Felt a close relationship with this coaching staff going back to her high school days. Before she was being recruited as COVID set in in 2020 and started her career at the very beginning at Rutgers and she just picked up her first personal foul. There's a quiet confidence about three oh, yeah. in green and gold. There's a play yesterday at practice where she literally bowled over a player trying to get to the rim about, I don't know, seven or eight inches taller than her. And it was the player that stayed on the floor and Johnson was fine and Larry Vickers looked at us and he said that happens every day in practice and on cue the mid-range is there he called her our linebacker well that was a great steal but an even better hezzy with the finish diamond johnson just showing you what she's got available in her bag Fallon norfolk state wheeler she is head up transition defense oh little hezzy let me get you with the runner as well Oh, you talk about just the confidence that she has. Junior from Philadelphia. You know, we know how important basketball is to that area. And Don Staley, one of her true icons and someone she's looked up to. Why but, isn't Erie often getting more notoriety nationally? Is it just because of Cam Brink? That's a great question. You know, I think, hey, you and I are here. We can give her some notoriety tonight. She comes through. But, I mean, that's what Larry Vickers said. He said, look, she's the best player you've not heard of yet. Or enough of, I should say. But, yeah, Kiki Iriafen doing incredible numbers this year. Most improved player in the Pac-12. Johnson, a deep three. And Clark. She last touched it out of bounds. It goes back to Stanford. Cardinal lead it 8-4. to four. Maybe the easiest question I will ever ask you, how important is it for Norfolk State to be the hangaround team early in a game like this? Well, what they want to do and how they can do that is this extended pressure with zone defense, right? If you want to make Stanford try to beat you, try to go outside, as Cameron Brink was ready for that 90-mile-an-hour fastball. <laughs> Quick hands from LaPolo. Second foul called on Clark, and she'll have to go to the bench for head coach Larry Vickers. And coming in for the first time, Anjanae Richardson. 
But that's what can get the Hornets in, into trouble is if they get into foul trouble now. You want to play aggressive, but you have to find that sweet spot. Brink inside. And Brink connects. You know, what do you do in that situation? Not much. Johnson somehow got it to go and around break no problem nearly comes up with a steal excuse me the Hornets seem to get back into defensive alignment here the Spartans excuse me so I'm seeing green I'm going for the beehive and Cameron Brink losing control of that basketball underneath the rim I think and she gets a chance to come here with the block, defensive play. You know, you're seeing Stanford kind of go at a pace where it's methodical, but you're kind of waiting for things to open up. And I think a big defensive play from Brink or an and one from Iriafin will roll this place open. And Brink, three-second violation called on Iriafin. It'll be Norfolk State basketball when we come back and the Spartans making history, talking about multiple championships getting it done with this win streak we come back to maples welcome back to maples pavilion fueling the run presented by wendy's how about 15 victories in a row for norfolk state the spartans led by diamond johnson back-to-back -back tournament championships coming out of the MEAC. they are for real and they're here at maples tonight to prove a point and so far 10 to 6 ball game has 27 wins, school record, and 15 straight leading in to the NCAA tournament. An incredible run for the head coach now in his ninth year, his eighth full season in Norfolk, Virginia. You got some transfers from power conferences in Diamond, uh, Johnson, Fields, Wheeler. And the way that this team has defended, that's what's gotten them to this, this place today. They forced 21 turnovers, they only commit 13. Four tonight for us already. But already four tonight, of course, against a team that knows how to defend pretty well in Stanford. Norfolk State third in the country in scoring defense. How about Lopolo staying with Johnson? Too strong for Wheeler. A rebound by Hannah Jump, one of the co-captains for head coach Tara Vandeveer. Iowa State awaits the winner of this two versus 15 matchup. Dimitri, Harry Oppen. Doesn't get the bounce, and the rebound Scott for and claimed by Richardson. So Debria Clark on the bench with two fouls. Richardson checks in, and it's done a nice job. And what the Spartans wanted to do coming into this game was execute their ball screen offense to try to score early on. And you got to get creative with shots because Stanford's not going to give you a lot of looks. And I love the way Anjanae Richardson, she got one off. Diamond Johnson got a good looking shot off. Difficulty high. Richardson averaging seven points per game coming off the bench this year against the zone. Stanford goes inside out. And another three ball. This one is good for Jump. Not a lot of dribbles, but a lot of passing and movement. That's what the Cardinal wants to see. And Hannah Jump, you know, she's a player that I just think can really pop off in this tournament coming into today with over 300 career threes. That's a lot of outside shooting. It is. Great cut inside to Fields. That's where that confidence is coming in. You know, their speed and athleticism, they're going to do what they can, but Kiki Ariaka is going to match you and raise you up one level. Her ability to get, excuse me, her ability to get to that block so quickly, that, that could be challenging tonight. Yeah, the size advantage for Stanford is significant. Ariaka, Cam Brink, and averaging over 6'4 there. Just those two players. Johnson the hesitation. Hung in the air and then was too strong. Oh. Very often the spin, too strong. And a jump ball. Arrow favors Norfolk State. Spartans will get it back. All smiles for Erie Offen. Yeah, she's a player who just has so much fun out there. And the joy on the floor, and that's just going to be contagious to the rest of her teammates. And it's something that's different than what we saw last year as Cam Brink is back on the floor, Pac-12 Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year, first-team All-American, as designated by the AP this weekend. But last year we were here, Ole Miss pulled off the upset in round two. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that team was as well connected as this one is. And I think that was a motivating factor 
for Tara Vanderveer in the middle of the offseason to make sure from a leadership perspective, everybody was on the same page, having more fun, communicating more. It feels like that's resonated with this team this year. Yeah, I would agree, no doubt. You know, it's a different uh, vibe here at Stanford as well. And of course, you know, bringing back different staff. You know, Tempe Brown back on the, the staff as an assistant coach for Tara Vanderveer. And, you know, this team, they, they got beat by an Ole Miss team that came in and played more physical basketball than they were ready to handle. So Ole Miss earned that win and then some to knock them off as a number one seed. Mitri shot out of bounds. Even Cam Brink talked about that with us yesterday. And we had her and Coach Vanderveer kind of communicating with everybody at the same time. And I looked at Cam and I said, what can you tell me about Coach that, that nobody knows? And she goes, it's her ability to adapt mm -hmm. and adapt with the times. And she did that going back to the end of last year compared to this year. And I said, we said, how? And she said, leadership and doing all the things that we just discussed. And it's made a difference, and we will see if it makes a difference in terms of a deeper run. In 1985, when Tara Vanderveer took over this Stanford program, they were one and seven in the Pac West. Two years later, she gets them to a sweet 16. By 1990, a final four. And the championships have just continued on. You know, this is a, a 1,214 game winning coach. The most in division one. Most in college basketball history. Surpassing Coach K earlier this year. Diamond Johnson found a crease and a bucket. Well, she gives the Spartans a different dynamic maybe than what was missing in years past for previous MEAC champions. That is scoring, it's confidence, it's the ability to make clutch shots when the Spartans need it the most, uh -oh. and here's another steal. The way that Norfolk State can stay in this game, and their confidence is just defense, period. Then you get the ball in the hands of a player like Diamond Johnson, who's ready to go up against anybody at 5-5. Fields got tied up. It goes back to Stanford on the possession arrow. Get buckets. That's what three and green and gold likes to do. I like it. Three and green. Get those buckets. Simon Johnson coming off the screen. Doesn't take it. Hezzy again. And she's got that quick release, right? And just being so compact in her game, you have to use your advantage of being quick and just trying to get a little separation of space. Bump by Dimitri. Williams able to stay balanced. Shot clock is off. One possession game here at the end of the first quarter. And Larry Vickers in a defensive stance, a head coach for <laughs> Norfolk State. Barty checks in and stolen away. Spartans have it. Johnson's got to go. Half court he barely oh. drilled it. Stanford did not score in the final two minutes and 42 seconds of the first quarter. Larry Vickers looking at this veteran officiating crew asking for some more calls, but his team still in it. One quarter in. Back here at Maples, Brooke Westboro, Roy Fulpott, the two-seat Stanford leading the 15th seed, Norfolk State. Head coach of the Spartans is one Larry Vickers, a former Ford for Norfolk State back in the day, his career winding down in 2008. And really, if you look at it, he's a lifer for the Spartans program. First as a men's assistant coach after his time as a player, and then now as the women's head coach, his eighth full season, nine overall on that side of it. And you said it best, Brooke. We talked to him about it yesterday. He says, I'm never going back. And I really think he loves how this program has been constructed, especially when you won back-to-back -back conference titles. Yeah, I mean, look, we get it. You know, the game is, is growing. It's exciting. We're just seeing new heights. And I love how he told us the story of when he took the team over, he said, yeah, I just, I don't know. Are they going to take the game seriously? So he takes them to top golf. And he says, you know what they did? They just wanted to watch hoops the whole time. So it was right then and there. He knew he had some ballers on the squad. Williams off the mark. Stanford gets it back. I mentioned the Cardinal upset loss at home to Ole Miss in the second round last year. Rebels advance to the Sweet 16. Norfolk State would love to pull off a massive upset. An ensuing campaign. It'll stay with the Cardinal. Cam Brink to Lopolo. Norfolk State has sat back in that matchup zone the majority 
of the first quarter. Brings left wide open the easy two. I'm just wondering, you know, when she's going to start getting some more consistent passes and shots. You know, she's taken about five or six field goal attempts, eerie often about the same. So I I'm good if I'm Sanford. I want to continue to feed my bigs until, you know, a three point shot opens up. Brink's got six and four. Johnson, the pump fake. Brink, make that five rebounds for 22. <laughs> I love 5-5 five, five going up. Fearless. Fearless. Cameron breaks 6-4. Almost giving up a foot. Diamond Johnson says, so what? And a foul inside that goes against Paris Mullins, her first. Cameron Brink, she had the flu last year at the start of the NCAA tournament. Yes. That was also a factor in what transpired, not this season. Right. We didn't get to see her in the first round matchup, but these two, 4-4 four, four to Deuce Deuce. You've seen that connection quite a few times. Only player in Division I with those numbers. Three and a half blocks per game that leads the country in terms of average and total rejections this year. Off the inbounds, Brink outside to Ogden, who just checked in. And a deep three by Hannah. Jump is all net. Perfectly executed, right? You go inside, you're often getting double team. Where do you look? You look cross court. Oppo in the wing and jump right there. That's got to be her spot. She looks so comfortable. Her second triple, 36% from deep this year. Plenty of time on the shot clock now at 10. Clark back on the floor with the two fouls. Wheeler, the mid range. Brink may have bothered that one at the last minute. Brink bothers him on every minute. She's out there on the floor. She's a bother. In the zone, Erie often. So strong, strong finish. Yep. I mean, powerful, quick. You can understand why her point production has gone up. The amount of time she spent in the gym, her confidence level is there. And she's just able to finish so much more smoothly than I remember seeing her in these last few years. Lead up to 10. Norfolk State's yet to score so far in the second quarter. Brink a block and a rebound. Ogden inside, Erie often. And Larry Vickers has seen it up. Spartans call a timeout. And the lead swells to 12. This 9-0 run led by the bigs. Cameron Brink, Kiki Erie often. Your two absolute studs inside. Look at that position Erie often gets. You can't take that away from her. She says, oh yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Kelsey, thank you very much. <laughs> 24 to 12. Brooke Weisbrook, Roy Philpott here at Maples Pavilion. Everybody having a good time as March Madness ensues. Diamond Johnson off the mark out of the timeout. So far, a 9 0 run for Stanford to start this second quarter. You hear Janae talk about Stanford right over her shoulder. Cameron Brink is right over everyone's shoulder. I mean, just the way that she's communicating out there, too. A lot of talking, but just constant head on a swivel. And a jump. Left-handed delivery, rebound caroms to Diamond Johnson. Junior from Philadelphia. First meeting between these two programs, MEAC champions. Stanford, we mentioned, came up just short in the Pac-12 title game. And Wheeler, a nice move, the block by Brink in the last minute, five to shoot. Johnson outside and tip to Ogden. And the defense outstanding on that possession. Yeah, I actually watched Cameron Brink uh, off of the ball. Just watched how she was able to move. And it was a quick first step to get over there and get a piece of that basketball. Eight points, eight rebounds already for the AP All-American. Well, she's going to be fun to watch at the next level, too. I mean, the more that she understands, studies the game, I thought Larry Vickers, head coach at Norfolk State, gave her a great compliment that you know, she's got that WNBA swag about her. Like, she knows how to position herself and try to get some calls going. Like, she's got that confidence about her of a pro. And now for tonight's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Cameron Brink, Kiki Iriafin. You look at the numbers, I mean, combining for nearly 37 mm -hmm. points and 23 rebounds. And you mentioned the blocks. Rim protection is there. Look, it's one of the reasons many people think Stanford can advance to the Final Four in Cleveland. Yeah. I just think when you have uh, solid bigs with experience, 
and the way that these two are playing, you know, especially like they're going to remember last year. They're going to remember losing here on their home floor to Ole Miss in the second round. And it, that stings. And if that's not motivation to get you back in the gym over the summer, I don't know what is. Rink and Erie often one of two duos. The average a double double. The other, Lisa Morrow, Angel Reese at LSU. That was a competitive game for a half down yes, in Baton Rouge today with Rice, wasn't it? Yeah, Rice gave him a little bit of a scare. And of course, we already talked about some upsets. Uh, at the Alabama Florida State game was outstanding as well. We saw a great one here. Ooh, Iowa State coming back 20 down against I, Maryland. I mean, it's a game of the day as far as we're concerned, right? Now that we're biased. <laughs> Maybe you're biased. Wheeler stuffed again and again. She's just playing with him at times. Just playing. <laughs> Flipping the braids back on the way down. Only point of the second quarter so far for the Spartans coming off the Johnson free throw moments ago. Here he often saved it to jump. Lapolo from downtown. And Brink tracks down the rebound in front of Fields. A wide open three. And Erie often called for the foul. That's her first. Stanford doubling up Norfolk State. Halfway home in our second quarter. Kaitlin Clark, what she set the world on fire this year. The scoring, the dime dropping. She led the country in both categories. Can't wait to see what it looks like in postseason play. I mean, just for her to take the floor and to have the composure that she still has after being on, we talk about the bright stage of this NCAA tournament. I mean, you you could walk up and down any street and mention the name Caitlin Clark, and 9.9 .9 out of people out of 10 are going to know who she is. I mean, she has just got more eyeballs on the game and has grown it and has done it with so much humility and teamwork. I just I love the way that she's approached her fame and how she's handled it. Inside a foul called, and Brink picks up the personal. Free throws coming for Norfolk State. So Cameron Brink now with two fouls, both coming in the last two minutes. And free throws on Janae Richardson back to the line. Four blocks already tonight for Cameron Brink. On Janae with four starts this season, 67% free throw shooter. You know, you and I have uh, been present for some performances here in the NCAA tournament. We saw Audie drop 40 today, Audie Crooks from Iowa State. We saw Olivia Miles put together a triple-double. Two years ago Two years in ago, Norman. yeah, against UMass. And I have a feeling we might see a triple-double from Cameron Brink tonight. I'm feeling blocks, boards, and points from Miss Brink. Could be a possibility. We have seen some incredible performances. Audie Croaks earlier, I, it was amazing. She took 20 shots, she missed two. If you missed the game. I mean, As a we, freshman. Right, we told her that in our post-game interview, and she looked at me and she was like, wow. What? Yes. Right. 18 For of 20 real? from the floor. Every time she got it, she's in the building, <laughs> checking all the social media mentions right now. Uh, it was going viral, up and it was Audie, going in. Viral. Diamond Johnson just picked up her second. Very often at the stripe, 75% free throw shooter. McDonald's All-American, the most improved player in the Pac-12 this season. Averaging a double-double, and yet perhaps kind of behind the spotlight of one Cam Brink. And she'll kiss away the second free throw. And having a little fun with the Norfolk State band, I believe. 28 to 13, Stanford sees in control. And Diamond Johnson thought about the backdoor cut. Got to go. Fields bounce it out. You, you can't halfway go. If you're going to go backdoor, you have to go because that's where turnovers and miscommunication. And we talked about the bounce back between uh, mistakes and then making up for it. So let's see kind of as the game goes on, how much more can the Spartans give away without bouncing back? Very often. Step back 16 footer. Box out was there. Norfolk State has it. Fields inside to Wheeler. Williams battling for the loose ball. Norfolk State maintains possession. And a foul called on Bozgana. That's her second. And Elena, stay on the floor for a moment and let's see. Here comes Harriel. 
Moscato will check out a high five and a conversation with Tara Vanderveer. We asked coach, what was it like when you broke the record? And one of the words that she used was overwhelming just mm. with the number of texts, emails, phone calls she received. She became the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history. But an incredible show of support really from everyone associated in sport at the time. Maybe the best story we were told the next night out at dinner, a local steakhouse. Christian McCaffrey was also in the building. He made it a point to come over and introduce himself to Coach Vanderveer. <laughs> Tara's like, hey, I know who you are. You don't have to tell me you're Christian McCaffrey. Turn around, Ariofen, Johnson the rebound. And here comes Norfolk State. And Wheeler down low in front of Ariofen connects. Well, this is the time for the Spartans to make their move with Cameron Brink on the bench. You know, what can they do to speed this game up? Just try to get some transition buckets. But they, it's, it's got to start with stops on this defensive end. First field goal made in the quarter by the Spartans on that last bucket. It's three points so far in the second. Trailing by 13, the shot clock at five. Dimitri tried to split the double team. And she traveled in the process. So here's the picture the night after breaking the record, becoming the all-time winningest coach in basketball history. Coach Vanderveer has on her special coat that was developed by Nike, and you see all the slots there representing all the wins yes. for all of those seasons. It's a coach she absolutely loves, and it was especially designed for her in that moment. It's, it's a, a great creative way to celebrate a lot of doves. Got to give you credit, Nike. That's the one way to do it. Well, they've come through only honoring Coach Vanderveer with her wins, you know, the billboards of what we've seen with Caitlin Clark and, and the creativity in Iowa that they've done. You know, just shout out to, to women's basketball having an incredible moment and Tara Vanderveer, who's just a legend and icon. When we talk about humble, I mean, she is the first one to tell you, talk about her players when you talk about wins, the national championships, the three that are here, all those final four appearances. After breaking the record on game day, she was scheduled to play her normal bridge game with her mother afterwards yep. and was somewhat disappointed when she had to actually not do that right away <laughs> and then go handle all the media obligations, you know, from the 1,000 people that wanted to interview her. But you mentioned how humble she is. That's a big component of it. The block, not the second time around. Dimitri got it the first time. And Richardson connects on the secondary attempt and the lead down to 11. Yeah, and, and a little shoulder shrug after she went back up. Just reminding you, I might be 5'8", but I still got it. Johnson, the rebound off the miss by Harriel. Here comes the Spartans. And Johnson traveled. She shifted that pivot foot. Now we knew this team had a lot of personality coming into this tournament. You don't try once. Go again. That's being resilient. Richardson. Flex. That's right. Hit the gym. <laughs> I mean, that's 5'8 against 6'3, and she found a way to get it done. <laughs> we'll be flexing too. You know, well, those shorties out here, we can get a shot off like that. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Preach it to the choir. <laughs> Very often double team. The reverse is there for 44 and White. What I like about her often, at, immediately after she makes a bucket, she is looking for her teammate who passed her the basketball. Very often with 13. Under a minute to go in the half. Norfolk State has held its own for the most part. Needs to close the second quarter in strong fashion with Brink on the bench. And Wheeler. See if Stanford tries to go two for one. Apollo, that's a three. Johnson, another board. Well, Diamond Johnson with seven points and four rebounds. Four second differential between the clocks. Johnson, the hesitation off glass. She found a way. Underhanded is the only way you're going to get that shot off without getting it blocked. And she found the room. Great finish for Ariofen. 
Kiki showing you she's number one. Her team off and running. And it's first game in the NCAA tournament 2024. Plays under review to see if the shot was made before triple zeros. Julie Promenhoek forming us. Don't go anywhere just yet. Well, After review, the basket counts. And the quick review indicates the basket is good. It felt like it was good in real time. Just for verification, yes. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Start of our second half, Kiki Iriopin, 15.7 boards, two dimes, stuffing the stat sheet for Stanford. Rick Weisbro, Roy Colpott back in Maples. Game two, half two, as Stanford is off and running as the two seed against the 15 seed Norfolk State. All right, so two quarters in the book. Stanford's been challenged a little bit tonight. What do you think so far? Yeah, I think the second quarter we saw some separation based off of, you know, the defense and the experience from Stanford. You got Cameron Brink and Kiki Iriopin, two of the best post players, you know, you'll find anywhere you know, out there doing work. And as much uh, energy and effort as Norfolk State is going to put into this game, and we'll still have it. Like, they're still going to come back. But it's just overpowering when you think about the size. Check out today's game track brought to you by Invesco. QQQ, Stanford 45%, Norfolk State 29%. Almost a double-double already for Cam Brink. You projected ahead back in the first quarter. Perhaps the opportunity for a triple-double. Yep. We will see. We will. Very often getting met. Williams, she'll go back to the line. At, you know, very often, the way she ended the first half and kind of getting started here in the third quarter, just wants the ball in her hands. I, I think she's really prepared. We talked about Brink having a triple-double, but, you know, Erie Offen's got that potential as well. 18 and 11, shooting 52% from the floor. You know, can easily block shots, get assists. Kiki in her career, well, the improvement well-documented. The former top 20 ESPN Hoop Girls prospect. And look at the difference from last year to this. Significant. And it's time spent in the gym. You know, when you see leaps and bounds in, in numbers from, from players and you just try to get to, you know, what's the secret sauce? What'd you do? It's not secret. You got to get in the gym and work hard. Hard work and discipline, the yeah, difference. That's it. Nia Fields down low connects. 34 to 21, the lead at 13 for the two seed Stanford. Mary Offen got back her miss, fell down. And standing out of bounds was Norfolk State. Goes back to the Cardinal. Now Williams had it. Just picked up her first personal, and Denasia turns it over on the ensuing possession. It's really the big story earlier today. Middle Tennessee upsetting Louisville down in Baton Rouge. Can break inside. Now officially with a double-double, 10 points, 10 boards. You see your versatility at work there. Just catching the ball face up. Diamond Johnson trying to get a piece of it. And then Cameron Brink goes to work. Nice swoop move and the big step for the finish. Off the knee of Erie off and out of bounds. It feels like Cam Brink starts games with double doubles. <laughs> it feels like it. I mean, she's so intimidating out there, and, and it's it, it's just even the help side defense, right? It's not even about shots or rebounds, any of that. It's her presence out there and how she helps the floor. Johnson left side, tried to sneak it around Brink. This time couldn't do it. She did it a couple of times in the first half. Lead at 15, jump, make it 18. Yeah, Took a shot in the eye from Fields as well. Three-pointers good. It was a late whistle, but the right call by this veteran officiating crew. Well, I don't think I've ever seen anybody make a three and get poked in the eye at the same time. That's a first. How good of a three-point shooter is Hannah Jump? Let me tell you, not only can she shoot it, she can get poked in the eye. You take one away, she's still going to knock it down. As you see here at the end of the play, he's catching a graze to the face from Fields. Well, four potentially the hard way, the only way for Hannah Jump, who has three threes so far tonight. 36% from downtown this season. Four-time Pac-12 champion, and now Wheeler in some pain, grabbing her mouth under the basket. And now both teams directed to go to their respective benches. And Wheeler still in some sort of pain. Gives us a moment to step aside. Stanford, in the meantime, 
has built its largest lead at 19. It's a 19 point lead for number two seed Stanford over Norfolk State to 15 seed. And after a review of that last sequence, Cam Brink checking on yep. Mimi Wheeler, it was determined, Brooke, that no additional foul was warranted. Yeah, incidental contact. And, and you actually see Wheeler's left arm extending, uh, pushing Brink away. But there were, as you see Brink going up, see her right arm there, just incidental contact. I think part of her shoulder, her arm caught Wheeler's face on the way up. And good sportsmanship by Brink to just check in with her. But, you know, gotta say, coming out of that timeout, she looked a little dazed. Richard Waters, one of the officials on this crew, came over to speak with us about it. He said it was an unobserved foul to begin with. The wind checked it, added nothing, and you mentioned the incidental contact. That was it. Everybody appears to be okay. Wheeler attacking after the brief break. Up and in with a bounce. So 22 in green and gold gets it done. Great response. It's the toughness of this team and Wheeler is fighting hard to try and get in front of Erie often. You can see that it feels like she has something to prove after what just transpired in that review. Brink defended by Johnson and Cam Brink up and in. Well, you don't see that every day. <laughs> and look at Erie often and Cameron Brink are just giggling the whole way down to the floor. I mean, talk about playing with some joy. And Brink said, yeah, you know, I got that outside shot. She told us she gets an opportunity to take a three. Coach Vanderveer may not want her to take it, but she said, you know what? I'm going to take it. Wheeler's going to take the long two and drain it. Yeah, well, great job by Wheeler to score twice after taking a shot to the face. Boy, you need something to wake you up. And she said, OK. Here we against Wheeler on the other end, the block. Norfolk State comes away with it. Here's Diamond Johnson. Diamond is always in the middle with all the bigs, isn't she? Just ready to go inch for inch. Heart over height mm -hmm. for three and green. Crossover against Lapolo. And Diamond Johnson to the free throw line to shoot two. The fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game. So the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Mention it briefly earlier. What really caught your attention today? Is it simply Middle Tennessee and the comeback against Louisville? I, you know, that was pretty epic. The way that they were able to just believe and continue to, to fight back. But, I mean, I am going to sound biased. Right here in front of us. How? in the world that Iowa State, I mean, Maryland shot the lights out of the ball. And what was a 33 point first quarter maybe? I mean, just couldn't miss from three. And then it was just a change and a turn of tides. And for Aldi Crooks, the freshman, to come through with a 40 piece in her NCAA debut, we saw a great tweet out there in one of the commercial breaks. Someone said, Aldi Crooks is the next best player to come out of Iowa. Boy, doesn't sound like a stretch. And you see today in the dance, Two of the top four largest comebacks in NCAA tournament history. The game we reference, Middle Tennessee down in Baton Rouge against Louisville, and then Iowa State right here in Maples about two hours ago, trailing by 20 in the first half against Maryland. And again, you don't want to say that it looked easy, but it happened suddenly. It was a 20-point deficit near the end of the second quarter. By the time we started the fourth quarter, we were tied, and it felt like ISU had really stolen all the momentum in the game and ended up winning by seven. Yeah. You know, they just stayed calm. And Coach Finley said at halftime, look, if this is how you want to go out, you know, this is going to be it. And, and they woke up. And sometimes it takes you know, for a young player just to get used to the mode, the speed, the lights, the attention. But an incredible job by the Cyclones to just really regroup and, and then finish out that game. Norfolk State has battled back here after Wheeler was hit in the face, incidentally, foul in 10. She has become a new player. Here's a steal by Johnson. Wheeler wants it. Off glass, give her six since that moment. Right in front of Dimitri. It's a powerful play for the MEAC Player of the Year. The 6-1 junior from Minnesota. Her last three games, she has been the go-to player for this team. 48 field goals, making 26 of them. So she's been the... Dominant factor when the ball gets in there, she's going to shoot it. Bust right through Stanford's defense, taking Dimitri to the rack. Wheeler shoots over 51% from the floor. The transfer from Daytona State, player of the year in the conference. 
Two-time all MEAC defensive team performer as well. Bozgano was fouled, trying to execute a simple cut across the charity strike. Larry Vickers being instructed to go back closer to where he's His supposed to be. <laughs> he's, he's a little bit closer to Stanford. <laughs> Well, he does look to be about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, so it doesn't take too many steps for him to reach the other side. Third foul called on Clark. Stanford maintains possession. Mosgana for three, and that one's good. Nice response for 20 and White. Lead back to 16. Spartans without a three-point make so far. Clark outside to Robinson and Sky Robinson, her first bucket. And the VCU transfer, one of many for this squad. So, you know, if they can just continue to get a few more stops, I mean, their defense looking pretty aggressive here these last few minutes. You know, if they can double the post and then try to get that next pass. Dimitri, the quick turnaround in the bucket. With too many scores for Stanford, Brooke Dimitri being one of them today. And she and Hannah jump, you're, you're starting to see and Stanford is more than just the inside game. Robinson to Johnson. And Johnson up and in. Baseline jumper was there. She gonna get you with that hezzy. I mean, you gotta believe, she sells you into believing she's gonna cross the ball over. Hannah oh. jump for three. How online does her shot look right now? Jump with 13. Four triples so far. That's a good sign for Stanford fans to start the dance with that kind of efficiency. It's in to shoot. Wheeler against Iriopin. Working hard inside. Gets back her own miss. And Dimitri clears for Stanford and was quickly fouled. It's the first on Robinson. Stanford basketball when we come back in the Cardinal. The 17 point lead. Point lead for the two seat Stanford over the 15 seat Norfolk State. Back in Maples Pavilion, it's time now for Get More, brought to you by Geico. Tara Vanderveer, well, the best all time, according to most major metrics, 15 Final Fours, three national championships, but the number at the bottom, don't bury the lead, 1,214 <laughs> wins. It's the most in D1 history, setting the record earlier in the regular season, surpassing Mike Krzyzewski. And of course, in front of Gino R.E.M., the head coach at UConn, yep. who has 11 national titles on his resume, three, if you take a look, for Tara Vanderveer and the coaches with multiple national titles. Well, just greatness and, and, you know, what an environment and time to be a women's basketball fan. You know, Tara Vanderveer, who's just spent her life, her career, giving back to this game, making it better for players all over, you know, getting players to the league, talking about Hall of Famers. And I love how she takes herself a break. You know, she gets away from basketball in the summer, getting back to Minnesota. You know, she's swimming, she's playing the piano. I mean, she is a Renaissance woman. She's swimming with the superstars and hanging out with some of the most famous and coolest people on the planet Earth. But that's a great point. She does recharge. And when you talk to those that are closest to her, that is a key component to her longevity. And we asked her the question yesterday, how do you stay so young? How do you stay, honestly, without trying to sound cheesy, so cool? And it goes back to simply being able to recharge the batteries and making sure that when the season arrives, she's ready to go. And that's what she's done, and it works out quite well. I mean, it was almost a fanboy question when I asked her that, you know. <laughs> Coach, I'm sorry. Roy coming through with the fanboy. I, I love just, it. You know, well, I just want to know. I get it. Look, it, you know, we just want to soak up every minute that you right. can. Being being here, listening to Tar Vanderveer speak. You know, you're, you're in the presence of a legend. Poked away by Robinson. Under three to go in the third. And in terms of teams that have the best opportunity to win a national championship this year, Stanford's on the list. 
South Carolina of course I think the heavy favorite right now Don Staley's team and you saw her on that list with two national championships still undefeated off an impressive win already in the first round against Presbyterian and we'll see how it unfolds but Cardinal they've done it before they did it just a couple of years ago and they'll force a turnover here Cam Brink the applause and that's literally just her standing over there, being an intimidating presence, forcing the unforced turnover. We mentioned last year, too, she started the tournament with the flu, missed the first game, played against Ole Miss, and honestly played pretty well. But there was a lot lingering over the program, and her at the time, the decision to come back and what right? was going to happen, it just feels like she's in a much clearer space mentally with all of those things and obviously not battling the flu that's a difference maker <laughs> that helps well also she mentioned you know with Caitlin Clark making her decision early I think it's it flattens the room you know there's no more questions your teammates are sitting there wondering you know even if they know nobody else says you, you just want to get it all out there in the open so now you can just concentrate and Don Staley talks a lot about keeping the main thing the main thing for Stanford it's this tournament this game Shot clock at two. Johnson against Briggs. Oh! Got it to go. Put that on your Sports Center top ten. Osgana rejected on the other end. It'll stay with the Cardinal. How on earth did she create the real estate and make that shot on the baseline, almost behind the backboard? Look, a ball fake, leaning out of bounds. Swish. Even Cameron Brink kind of held her hands up, like, "Well, that's." about the best defense that I could play. <laughs> That's against the leading shot blocker on the planet, giving up almost a full foot in right. size. Now, you talk about hard over height. That is a manifestation of it right there. Let's watch this play again. Yeah, top 10, we need a little love here. It's poetry in motion. Ooh. Step back, has he fallen out of bounds, fade away over a player almost a foot taller than you. Foul was called on Mullins, two free throws for Cameron Brink, who had an incredible streak earlier this year. What was it, 73 in a row at the line, so she's improved the overall jump shot, ability to nail down free throws, 85% on the year. Of course, the uh, announcer jinx in full effect there. There you go. Under 90 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Brink comes up with a steal. Currently projected as the number two pick in the upcoming WNBA draft. Just behind Caitlin Clark. Some big names on that list. Yeah, L.A. with the second pick. I mean, how nice is this for Indiana if they want to take Caitlin L.A. to get Cameron Brink? It's like, yeah, it's meant to be. Checks out. WNBA draft coming up April 15th. So not too long to wait. Wheeler, another long two. Well, she's only attempted three three-point shots this year. She's drained two. That's a couple of shots just a step in front of the arc. 12 she points tonight. Came up big in the MEAC championship against Howard. Seven offensive rebounds, a 20 and 15 game total. So she's for real coming into here today. And how much energy did the Spartans have? I don't know that they got enough to battle Buzgana. I don't know if they got enough to battle Hannah Jump. Kiki Arioff and Cameron Brink. A lot of weapons for this Cardinal team. Shot clock is off. Should be the final possession of the third quarter. One in which Stanford has increased its lead by eight. Diamond Johnson, the crossover. And the baseline jumper, no. Mosgana has it. And right at the buzzer is wide left for number 20. Elena Buzgana on fire. Stanford seizing control in the third quarter. And number 20 in white getting it done, bro. How about shooting 46% from three? Ball movement, unselfish play. And the Cardinal with their largest lead of the evening. Kiki and Cameron getting it done. Now these two. You know, we knew coming into this game their numbers, but watching them play together and their chemistry, how much fun they have, and just how much they affect the guard play. You know, usually your, your team is dictated by the way the guards play the game, but to me it feels like Stanford, you know, they're inside and they're bigs. Cameron Brink almost like a point center out there as much as she talks. A point center. 
Emma Johnson comes up short. Brooke Weisbrod, Roy Philpott, start of the knows. fourth quarter. Ellie knows a little bit about a point center, don't they? Who was that? A point center, LA? Yes. Yeah, a little familiar. I think so. Yeah, that makes sense. Second personal on Wheeler. You hear a lot about the point forward. You just don't hear the point center all that often. Well, it, you know, she's she's got uh, definitely the, the vocal skills to get it done. And I think as she extends her range, you know, even more, as she gets in the league, her ball handling skills, she can fit into that world. Sparks without a three-pointer. The runner off the mark by Fields. And a foul call. Two free throws coming. Norfolk State not going down without a fight tonight. And they have... Been competitive since the jump. It's a three-point game after the first quarter. It was a 13-point contest at halftime. And the Spartans doing their very best, bringing this 15-game winning streak into Stanford, California. Now Williams at the line, a 66% free throw shooter. Denasia, the St. John's transfer. Remind you, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Mention the four-pack of games tomorrow, and the stars shining brightly on a Sunday. we got two games on ABC, two more on ESPN, and we're talking about Caitlin Clark. Talented freshman Hannah Hidalgo, Paige Beckers, Rakia Jackson. We haven't mentioned her name tonight. And Juju Watkins, who is the second leading scorer in America for USC, the Pac-12 tournament champions. Think about it. That USC team beat Stanford in the tournament title yeah. game. you got to be some kind of special to pull that off. And Juju Watkins is exactly that, as is the rest of her team. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, USC has got a chance to go the distance. And, and actually, you know, I think they could play the other SC in the national championship game. They've got that kind of power. That would have people on the left coast and the uh, east coast talking about who the best USC actually is. Well, you know who it would really make happy? I saw Instagram post the other day. Snoop Dogg was talking about he wants to see that happen. So, got to do it for Snoop, you well, know. If Snoop wants it, then we all want it. <laughs> I was going to know. And ripped away by Norfolk State. And that was Williams again. Active in the fourth quarter and upset with herself for not corralling in that pass. You know, not too many turnovers really for either team tonight, but just seven for the Spartans. It might be their eighth, but what you do look at to me is the assists. Just five for Norfolk State, and then you look at the other side. Stanford coming through with 16. Lead at 20. Trapping full court pressure being applied by Norfolk State. Brink has position against Wheeler. Outside of Bozgana. So if Sanford can continue to go through this tournament and get some outside shooting, you see tonight Bozgana four of five. If you can get some numbers you know, from your, your guards, get those outside shots to three, then you got the complimentary defense on the inside. The inside scoring, the rebounding. Brink said, make sure if you show that other Diamond Johnson <laughs> highlight that you show that one as well. And she got the dime to Bozgana. But this block uh, it probably won't be on Sports Center top 10. But okay. That's light work. That's light work for Cameron now. Good she just want to make sure she uh, cleaned that last one up. It's been a fun back and forth between Diamond Johnson and the Stanford Bigs at times tonight. Sky Robinson with a baseline jumper. Johnson got the rebound. And working hard on the offensive glass at 5 5. Well, Polo just picked up her third. So Diamond Johnson tonight, 17 points, 7 of 19 from the four, seven rebounds. And one more free throw coming. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues tomorrow on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com.
Norfolk State in its 15 game winning streak. MEAC champions on the line tonight. Brink was stripped. And was she fouled? The answer is yes. Larry Vickers. You know, the two games here tonight, it feels like they've been cleanly officiated. And there's been some chippy moments. And that's rare that, you know, you and I both agree, <laughs> but especially you. Yeah, especially me. I'll give you that. No, I think it's it's been really well officiated. It, and it's been quick. Not only clean, but quick on the calls that, you know, need a little bit further review. It's kept the momentum of this game going. And I think the players, fans, all of us really appreciate that. Wheeler picks up the personal. Brink was shoved in the back. There's seven minutes remaining. Well, the first game was so fast and the pace was just so crazy at times. It got physical, got a little chippy. But for the most part, it was really well officiated, which you always appreciate. You mentioned the, the quickness. It was crisp. Crispy. So with the three-point shooting or the, the shots from both sides today. I mean, that was just a well-played game. High-level hoops. Yeah, very few mistakes. You know, execution, adjustments in game. The way Iowa State figured out, you know, Maryland switching one through five and then finding a way to score. It was just, that was fun. Okay, Cameron Brink, get up. Johnson off the mark and a foul called against Robinson. And Brink was bothered. Wheeler may have reached in from behind. And she did. So the third on Wheeler. Fifth team foul. Free throws for Cameron Brink. And I mean, it is obvious when you watch, you mentioned it earlier with Iriafin and Brink. A lot of smiling on the floor. Yeah. A lot of smiles off the court. It feels like there's some inside jokes being told and <laughs> everybody's in a good mood. Now, granted, they're winning, and so that certainly adds up. But just overall, there's a totally different vibe surrounding this team. Yeah, I think when, when you're confident, when you're happy. I, mean, I had a, a coach who coached men's college basketball for 40 years. In my freshman year was his first year coaching women as Brink gets another block. That's six now, four away from a triple-double, by the way. And he said, you know, the difference that I found in coaching men and coaching women, and maybe Larry Vickers can speak to this, is women will win when they're happy. Men are happy when they win. I got to process that for like another quarter or so. <laughs> it's, it's but it easy. sounds brilliant. Well, I didn't say it. I wish I could take credit for it. But, you know, he makes a great point. And I think, you know, you win at, when you feel confident, happy, when you're having fun, playing joyful basketball. And, and Stanford's in alignment this year. And that alignment could equate to a national championship. And the foul underneath. Goes against the Cardinal. Chloe Cardi picks up the foul. Two-time Gatorade Arkansas Player of the Year. Freshman out of Conway, Arkansas. MIAC champions, 15 in a row without a three-pointer made tonight. And Johnson comes up short on that effort. Breaking those six rejections, part of eight blocks tonight for Stanford. And rim protection certainly front and center. And Bill Finley gets set to mm. try to figure out how to solve the Stanford puzzle potentially on Sunday night. Head coach at Iowa State, Johnson in transition, missed it. And ahead to break. Oh. We thought for a moment when she turned around and try to on, smash wait. it in. Come on, little two-step. Powers, dunk, come on. Your teammates are starting to feel it. <laughs> she said, I hope I didn't mess up your assist. My bad. My bad, Diamond Chloe. Johnson across the way appears to be cramping up. Mm. And so that'll be a pause in the action. We're talking about leaving it all on the floor. You see Diamond Johnson just in pain right now as the training staff trying to work on that right leg. 
probably both legs at this point. She has not backed down. She has stood her ground. Five feet, five inches tall, 19 points tonight. Seven boards, two dimes. And the MIAC newcomer of the year. Leading scorer. And the MIAC tournament most outstanding player. Between her and Wheeler, they're right there at the top of the league. And accounting for that 15 game winning streak coming into tonight. You know, one of the hardest things to do while you're trying to get a cramp worked out is relax. Right? You're, that, that's the only thing you got to do in order for it to work. But it's so difficult, so challenging. You just see the training staff just trying to keep her legs straight and stretch the back of that calf area, which tightens up. You know, not only just because of dehydration and playing and sweating, but the anxiety of playing in a big game too, that will get to you. But Diamond Johnson, as tough as they come, you know, certainly this isn't nerves. This is just her leaving everything she has. 65-42, five and a half to go in the fourth quarter. And we mentioned it just moments ago as Diamond Johnson has helped up. That's a good sign. Iowa State awaiting the winner of this game. Cyclones, the seven seed, came back from 20 points down, rallied to defeat the 10 seed in Maryland in the first meeting between those two programs ever. And the Cyclones be back here at Maples Pavilion Sunday night. Time and network yet to be determined. And a nice round of applause and a show of appreciation for this partisan crowd for Diamond Johnson. Iowa State, Stanford, I mean, still a little early to say it, but it looks like it's headed that direction. Yeah. An early thought or two. I'd say you can start turning the lights on, not too, too early. You know, maybe dim them up a little bit. But what I'm thinking is, boy, the attention, the double team that Audie Crooks is about to face with Erie Offen and Cameron Brink. But oh, what a matchup inside. Now I'm curious to see, can they get that post entry pass from the top of the key like they were able to get consistently for Maryland. I don't see that happening. So they're going to have to figure out another way to get Audie Crooks the basketball. So that's the charge for Bill Finley. We got to find a way to create a path for that entry pass yes. because lobbing it up over the defense is not going to work against 6-4 Cameron Brink and 6-3 Kiki Iriopin. Chance for three for Courtney Ogden. And the Cardinal in an outstanding position at this point with a 25-point lead. Courtney Ogden turning on the gas. The Jets here in the open floor. Off the strip. Lapolo getting their hands out there. And Ogden said, yeah, I'll just go ahead and take this myself. And if you missed the first game, Crooks dropped a 40 piece. Crooks attempted 20 shots and she missed two. It'll be a different deal against the nation's leading shot blocker. But if you're wondering what we're going to be talking about when we open our show Sunday, <laughs> I think we just told you. Guessed you. It. I mean, it is. It'll be a fun and fascinating matchup down low with with Crooks and Brink, and to see who can out physical who. Mid range is there for Dimitri. Stanford with its largest advantage at 27. Right, I mean, you have two, two totally different styles of game, too, with Crooks and Brink. You know, Crooks is, she's going to get that position. She's going to hold it. And as long as you get her the basketball, she's still got some footwork to finish. And Brink just loves to move without the basketball. Do whatever she can. Stanford in search of its third national championship. Let's so take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance tonight. And we mentioned the bigs down low. Cameron Brink set herself quite an evening. Another double-double. Four blocks away. Potential triple-double. 17-15 and six for the first team. All-American performer once again here for the Cardinal. And the next highest rebounder on the squad, Kiki Iriofen with eight boards. And she will face likely Audie Crooks and the Iowa State Cyclones here in game two on Sunday. It'll be a fantastic matchup. Two different styles of play in the post, but both terrific. 18 to 20. 18, 18 to 20. 20. And 
making her NCAA tournament debut. Took about a half for things to settle down. She was quite effective in that second quarter, but Iowa State trailed big. Ended up with the second largest comeback in NCAA tournament history. And now for Stanford Tar Vanderveer in search of national championship number four. And off to a good start against Norfolk State tonight with Iowa State waiting. Top of the key for Clark and Norfolk State still without a three point make tonight. Now 0 of 8. Naya Harriel on the floor again. Second time we've seen 32 in white tonight. Fields off the steal. Approaching three to play. And there's the first three ball of the game. Anjanae Richardson. Now Larry Vickers, he had an extended conversation with him yesterday, head coach at Norfolk State. As we took in the Spartans practice. He said, this game's going to feel different. It's going to be different for us. We've been the favorite all year long, opted a triple. And he said it in an interesting way. He said, we're playing with house money. Like, we got here. We right. made it here. We found a way, the 15-game winning streak. And it wasn't that they didn't come here with a chance to win. They did in the sense that it's the first time they've been an underdog in probably three months. And he was curious, how are we going to respond? They responded quite well in that first half. This was a game into the midway stages of the third quarter. Three point deficit after the first 13 at halftime. Diamond Johnson with an array of circus shots under duress. Got 13 minute. Yeah, and, and you can see why she has been the reason, you know, she and Wheeler have carried this team to their win streak, to the second straight trip to the NCAA tournament. I mean, Diamond Johnson has put on a display here. Getting ready to check back in the game after having to leave for cramps. She's still over at the scores table trying to stretch out those calves. How hard is that to do, by I the way? I can't even tell you. I, I mean, to, I don't even know to play a game like that. Just in life, think about when you wake up in the middle of the night and your feet get cramped. It takes you a half an hour before you can even get relaxed and go back to bed, let alone get in and play a basketball game. Very often with a nice round of applause as she checks out Diamond Johnson back on the floor. Her night and Cameron Brink's night officially done. And a business-like effort in this win against Norfolk State. It's gone at the strike. And one more coming. Elena. A wire to wire win for the two seed Stanford. Cardinal remember what happened in round two a year ago. It's a gritty old Miss team. You mentioned the physicality that Coach Yo implored with her squad a year ago as they advanced into the Sweet 16 and upset Stanford here. And you watch the game, it didn't feel like an upset. That'll be on the mind of players that are back from that squad. And Tar Vanderveer told us it left a very bad taste in our mouth. We remember it vividly. Johnson missed the three. Cameron Brink told us the same thing. And well, you know, as her career comes to a close, and she wants to play another weekend or two or yeah. three, if possible. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fresh on her mind. You know, Sunday afternoon, or, or, or Sunday for her to be able to come in here and lead her team, and the all-time winningest coach, Tara Vanderveer, into the Sweet 16. Incredible opportunity for the Cardinals. They have to get their fourth national championship. And coach Vanderveer with those three. We knew Aguera on the floor for the first time. And the Cardinal. The range jumper is there for Clardy. He figures she's going to have a much larger role with this team next season. I love her defense, her energy off the bench, too, showing a little range. But what she's brought, Ogden off the bench, the good options for Stanford as Wheeler keeps fighting. Chance for three. Mimi Wheeler. 78-47. Now if you're Stanford, you're 
trying to get back, get some rest, gear back up after a brief couple of hours off, and then get ready for Iowa State and the problems that Ollie Crooks presents. And then one thing that we didn't mention until very late in that first contest was the play of point guard Emily Ryan. By the end of the night, had 14 assists. And yeah. her veteran leadership, now that that foot is healthy, forcing her to miss nine games to start the season. Think about what she brings to the table and Addie Brown, the Fab Five, that freshman class that has been the heart and soul for Iowa State head coach Bill Finley. There's some matchups that are going to be fun to watch to see who can actually claim that early advantage. Tar Vanderveer knows competition only gets better from here on out. Evan Johnson to step back. Wheeler. She'll close this game in strong fashion. 17 points and seven rebounds. And with the shot clock off, that'll just about do it. Seventy nine to fifty, our final score from Maples Pavilion. And for the Stanford Cardinal, continue a strong streak of first round victories as the two seed goes wire to wire in the victory against Norfolk State. Now Cameron Brink being the All-American that she is, 17 points, 15 boards, a couple of assists, but how about the leading scorer today? Buzz Ghana from Stanford, 18 points, four of six from behind the line. 24 straight in that first round for the Stanford Cardinal. For Larry Vickers, his 15-game winning streak comes to a close, and the MEAC Tournament champions Head home after a sensational season that saw them claim 27 wins and just six losses.